We have some more filter tools. Let's look at them. Next one we have is correct drawing line. And I'm actually going to, why don't I select to show you that you can, you can limit this to part of your picture. So if I uh, use a marquee tool and just select, for example, these ones right here. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I've selected these and I'll just operate on these. And because I said, if you don't select before anything, it will just select the entire layer. So let's try these. So correct drawing line is going to let us change the line width, either a larger size or a smaller size. And this is sometimes helpful instead of, I mean, you can of course use your eraser and just kind of shave away lines as I call it shaving, but you, this is kind of a little more elegant solution and it's pretty good actually. So you have two options, either make it thicker or thinner to make it thicker and you just have an, a slider and it will just adjust the lines. And if for some reason you want to do more than this amount, you can just do the process and then run it again and you can keep going as large as you want, but eventually it'll start to uh, kind of, it kind of approximates as it expands. So it, it loses some of maybe the, uh, the fine quality or the intricacy of your line work. You'll notice that. And to make it thinner. So, and so on, you can see it changing. Yeah, so that is the uh, change uh, correct line width tool, or the filter, excuse me. Next we have the remove dust. And uh, to show that, I'm gonna actually put down some spray. That'll illustrate it a little better. So uh, actually that's fine. And if I just do this on the entire picture, I'll just uh, filter, correct drawing line, remove dust. And you get, again, a slider that can kind of, basically any, if you're working with like something and you just have a lot of little uh, chop marks from whatever you've been assembling, this is kind of a quick way to remove dust as it, as it says from the uh, picture. And you have other options to change, like whether it's replaced with the background color or if it's turned transparent. So, but that's generally what this uh, tool does. Let's see, next we have the draw tool, which has just this Perlin noise. And I don't really use this that much. Perlin noise is just noise, kind of like on a TV set, if it's if it's just running and there's no uh, channel, it's just sometimes you get this noise, and uh, you can change the scale and so on. There's different ways. I don't really use this that often. Maybe some artist has a wonderful use for it, but uh, yeah, it's noise. So maybe this will be for your purposes, not for mine. Okay, next we have the effect mosaic, which is just going to turn our picture into kind of a little more of a mosaic, a little more pixelated, I guess you would say. There we go. And you can take this all the way down. And once again, if you, uh, if this isn't enough for you, you can hit okay and then just run it again and make it super mosaic. But eventually it's going to start losing its, uh, you know, it's just going to become white eventually. So I'm going to cancel that and undo it. Control Z. Okay, next filter we have is the sharp. And this is kind of a reverse of the blur. So if you've been working with, uh, if you've had your anti-aliasing off with your pen tool, if it's been totally off and you've been doing lines and you want to make it a little smoother, you would do the filter and use one of the blurs. But if the opposite is the case, if you've been, you know, working with a anti-aliasing all the way up, I'll show you. And in this case, the edge is already pretty smooth. And if for some reason, for maybe coloring purposes or some kind of reason that you need a, a clear edge, because right now you have these pixel pixels that kind of fade out. And I don't know how the process works exactly. If it's like those are gray pixels instead of black, but you don't have this clear line between black and white. Whereas when it's, when it is 
the no anti-aliasing, you do have that kind of, basically it's either black or it's white. There's no middle ground. So if I want to do kind of the opposite and make this like the one on the right, make it like jagged almost, I can just use this uh, sharp tool. So you'll get a more noticeable effect with the, sh the sharp strong. And as you can see, it's a little more. The thing is, it also changed this one to make it. Well, I don't know if it did anything to this one because uh, it was already like that. So, yeah, but you can see what happens. It makes it more like that. I'm going to undo that. Yeah, it didn't do anything to this one. Okay, so that is the sharp. And then next we have our transformations, which are. Uh, these are not like the trans the edit transformation which is, well, I mean, it is in a sense. It's just these are more extreme. So the other transformation tool would like kind of let us resize things and free transform, but these are going to be even more radical. I'm going to zoom out so you can see what happens in each one of these. Because some of these are pretty amazing, but uh, let's take a look. So the first one, convert polar coordinates, is going to... Yeah, so this kind of makes give it gives it kind of an oval like shape, and it also has another option which is going to make it more like this, as you can see. So these each offer like distortions and effects for different reasons. So these are the first of our transformations. Next we have curved face projection, which as it sounds, if this were a face, it would look kind of, you know, like a curved face <laughs> as it sounds. And you also have two options with the spherical surface or a column. And these each just do kind of different looks as it were. And you can adjust the radius, the amount and so on. Uh, you can play with these. They're, they're fun. They're, they're nice effects. You can move the radius around and so on. I cancel that. The next one is our, what is it? Ah, oh, the fisheye lens, which as it sounds, gives you a fisheye lens. And this is a common filter on a lot of phone uh, photo apps. And you're probably used to this by now. It, it's more noticeable if, in a, if you have a face, but I think you get the idea. And you can change it to a lot more extreme. At this point, it's this is super fisheye. Okay, I'm gonna undo that. Next you have the pinch, which is going to kind of pinch towards the center, or actually that's the default, but you can move the radius around and you can make this pretty extreme. So it's all kind of narrowing to that point, kind of like a black hole or something. So that's pinch. Next we have wave, which is just going to turn our picture into a wave, but you can actually choose the number of waves, which is pretty cool. Like the more, the more number of waves, the wavier it's going to look. Watch. Whoa. So that's pretty impressive. And you can change the amplitude, the direction, and so on. This is a pretty interesting looking tool. This is one of those tools though, like you can't totally plan how it's going to look. You just have to like kind of play with it and see what you get out of it and you'll get some amazing things. So that is the wave. Next one is our wave shape. And so this is getting pretty mathematical. You can either have a sine wave or a triangle wave or a rectangle wa rectangular wave, each producing a slightly different result. So Again, this is something you're just going to have to play around with if you really want to know what's going to happen. But that was, I, would, I never would have expected this to come out of that, that other picture, but it's kind of interesting. It, this could be like some kind of abstract art or some kind of weird city. This kind of looks almost like some 70s sci-fi book cover or something, but uh, who knows what it is. You can play with it. Okay, next we have our whirlpool and as it sounds it's kind of whirling around either the center or you can move the 
the radius, change different things, the twist, the tension. So we get another cool effect. And then finally we have the zigzag. This one's not really ziggy zagging, zigging. Let me turn it up. Zigzagging. There we go. So all kinds of things you can do. And of course you can always just limit it to part of your picture. You could limit it to a layer and so on. It's, there's a lot of, uh, this is really a um, amazing tool that like some of these tools have hardly been explored. I feel in, in art and, there's, if, if you mix them with other tools in, in different ways, just keep tweaking it and messing with it and kind of pushing it into new territory, you can come up with some amazing stuff that nobody has ever done, which is awesome. So definitely try these out. So those are your filters.